Hello and welcome to my video all about how to make your own custom sized envelopes. I'm going to be making two different styles of envelope. Firstly, the square or wallet type of envelope, which is usually used for more of a professional finish. And then I'll be showing you how to do the banker pointed or classic style, depending on what name you give it, which is usually used for more informal invites and cards. What you will need is the card that you wish to enclose in the envelope, a pen, a ruler, some scissors, a glue stick or some double sided tape. You will also need some paper to make the template out of. I am just using some regular A4 printer paper. The card that I am making the envelopes for is very small and so my template easily fits onto an A4 piece of paper. However, if you are going to be making an envelope for a larger card, you may need an A3 piece of paper or you may need to sellotape some A4 sheets together to make a piece large enough. And then you'll need the paper that you're going to make the final envelope out of. I'm going to be using some recycled brown paper for this, but you can use any paper you like, plain or patterned. Whether it's wrapping paper, wallpaper, vellum, scrapbook paper, whatever you like. The piece of paper that you're going to need to make the template with needs to be a certain size. One dimension needs to be at least two and a half times the width of the card that you want to enclose. And the other measurement needs to be at least the height of the card plus five centimetres or two inches. The first thing you need to do is lay out the piece of paper that you are going to use for the template. And then you lay the card that you want to enclose on top. Try and place the card in the centre of the paper. You will need at least two centimetres on either side of your card. The first marks you need to make onto the template paper are either side of the card, as shown here. You want to make each mark one or two millimetres from the card. You are then going to place the card in the bottom left hand corner and you are going to make a mark on the template paper about two thirds of the way up the side of the card. You are then going to fold the paper horizontally at the point where you just marked. You are then going to use the two marks you made previously to do another two folds. This time you are going to fold vertically. Try and make sure that you fold accurately every time and that you fold at right angles by lining up the paper edges. I am just going to use a pen to quickly mark the folds that we have already done so that you can see more clearly on the camera. As you can see the card fits within those folds. You then need to make a mark one or two millimetres above the card and turn that into a horizontal fold, like so. We are now going to measure out the top flap. You need to fold up the lower flap and fold down the upper flap. Because I can see through the paper, I can see where the upper edge of the lower flap is, so I make a mark directly above that. So on the upper flap I have a pen mark directly above where the edge of the lower flap is. Because we want the upper flap to overlap by one centimetre, we then make a pen mark one centimetre below that mark we have just made. I then make another fold horizontally across the paper, like so. Then we cut along the fold that we just made and put the excess paper to one side and that will completely enclose the card in the paper. The rectangle that we have in the centre now is just a little bit bigger than the card. Ok, so we have completed all the folds we need to do now and we are just going to cut out the envelope shape. The next stage is to put a little pen mark about one centimetre from where the folds cross. So we are going to do a mark centimetre from this intersection at the bottom right and the same at the bottom left and also top right and the top left. Then you need to carefully cut out those squares at each corner, especially being careful right at the intersections of the folds 
because if you cut out too much paper there, you'll end up with holes in your envelope. If you can't see the folds very well, make sure that you use a ruler and a pen to just go over the folds accurately. So once those four corners have been cut out, I'm just going to reduce the size of the side flaps. The bigger the card you are enclosing, the wider you can make these flaps, but I'm going to stick to between one and one and a half centimetres wide. I'm just eyeballing the measurements, but if you want to be completely accurate, then of course you can use a ruler and pen to do this. I then cut across the top of the side flaps just to make sure that they fit together with the rest of the envelope nice and neatly. Try and make the angles on each of the side flaps the same. I then fold in those side flaps and also the lower flap like so. I then mark where those side flaps end and I then use my scissors to cut straight from those marks to the marks I made earlier, a centimetre from the intersections. Just to make a more attractive angle on that lower flap. You then do exactly the same for the upper flap, except that I like to make the top edge slightly wider, very slightly wider than I made the edge of the lower flap. And that's your envelope template done. And now you can test it on your card just to make sure that it fits nice and snugly. If there's anything you want to amend, then do it now. And if you're happy with it, then it's time for the next step. The next step, of course, is to use your template to cut out the actual envelope. I want to make my envelope from recycled brown paper, so I simply trace the template onto that paper. And then just cut that line nice and neatly. Make sure that when you cut the template out, you cut inside the pen mark that you've made because obviously you don't want pen marks on your envelope. You then fold that paper shape in exactly the same places as your template. You then just need to put some strong glue stick or some double sided tape onto either the side flaps or the lower flap and stick your envelope together. Make sure that you don't add the glue or tape in a place that doesn't join with another piece. So for instance, you don't want to put the tape all along the side flap because otherwise you'll end up with exposed sticky tape and you'll end up accidentally sticking your envelope shut. So obviously you don't want to do that. Make sure you put the tape in the right place. And that's your envelope finished. Of course, you can then reuse the template to make as many envelopes as you want. Even though I haven't done so, you can also choose to line the envelope with a different paper. All you would do is cut out a shape from your lining paper that's about one centimetre smaller on all sides than the main template. You simply then use tape or a glue stick to glue the lining to the main shape before folding and assembling the envelope. The next style we're going to make is the pointed classic or banker's style envelope depending on the name you want to give it. And the first thing you need to do is again, get a piece of paper to use for your template. The length of the paper needs to be about two and a half times the height of your card. And the width needs to be about two and a half times the width of your card. If one piece of paper isn't large enough, then you'll have to sellotape a couple of pieces together. Okay, so the first step is to put your card on top of the piece of paper. Make sure that you lay the card down as shown with the longest edges at the top and the bottom. You then need to fold over the left hand edge of paper so that it comes just over halfway along the card. So fold one side so that it covers just over half of your card. Complete the fold as shown and make sure it's at right angles to the bottom edge of the paper. And then you do the same on the other side. So keeping the card in place, you fold the right hand side of the paper over the card and fold. You don't want this fold to be really, really tight against the card because you want to be able to remove the card from the envelope easily. So make sure that when you make this fold, it's about two millimeters away from the card edge. 
As you can see, the paper to the right of the right hand fold is a lot wider than the paper to the left of the left hand fold. And now we just need to even that up a bit so that the template is symmetrical. So put the card back in place and fold the right hand flap over it. Then fold the paper back on itself like so, so that the fold is just over halfway over the card. Once you've made that fold, you need to cut along it and remove the excess paper. To double check that the template is now symmetrical, we're going to fold the template down the middle like so, and make sure that the folds line up at the edges. So now you have a fold right down the centre between the folds, and any paper that sticks out at the edge, like shown here, can be removed. And this will result in a nice symmetrical template. The next step is to fold the bottom of the paper upwards over the card so that it covers, again, just over half of the card. Complete this fold and make sure it's at right angles with the edges of the paper. Next, you need to mark two points that are one centimeter either side of the center line. You want to do this on the bottom edge of the paper. I did this by eye, but you can do it with a ruler instead if you want to make it exact. The next step is to fold the top of the paper down over the card. So now the card is fully enclosed. Again, complete this fold, making sure it is at right angles. Now what we have is a rectangle right in the middle of the template that is just a little bit bigger than the card. Okay, so we put the card back and we fold over the sides with the top flap being on top. You can see through the paper here, so you can see where the lower flap comes up to on the upper flap. And I'm just marking that point here. And then I mark one centimeter below that point. What you want to do is have the upper flap overlap the lower flap by about one centimeter and this is how you do it. So you unfold the top flap and mark that last point on the inside of the template as well. So now you can see it on this side. We're now going to draw four more points. The first two are on the upper flap, about one centimeter up on both sides from the upper fold line. And then you do the same on the lower flap by making a mark either side one centimeter down from the lower fold line, like so. We're now going to go to the mark that we made earlier, which is the uppermost mark on the template. I put my fingernail onto that mark to help me fold the paper at that point. I then turn this mark into a horizontal fold all the way across the paper. I then use my scissors to cut along that fold and remove the excess paper. Okay, so now we fold the center line that goes across the template. So we fold the paper in half, making sure that the folds line up at the edges of the paper. We now have a template covered in rectangles. And the next step is to cut out the corner rectangles. The next thing we do is go to the lower flap and make a straight cut between each of the marks on both sides. So we cut between the two marks on the right hand side, like so, and then we cut between the two marks on the left hand side. Do the same on the top flap by cutting between the pen marks I've already made and the center point of the top edge. I then place the card in the center of the template and fold in the side flaps. These need to meet in the middle. So if they're overlapping like mine are, then I just fold them back on themselves like so. 
until they just meet. I then cut along the folds to remove the excess paper and then they should meet perfectly in the centre. I then mark two points on each of the side flaps. I make a mark one centimetre from the vertical fold at both the top and the bottom. I then do the same on the other side. I then cut between the marks I just made and the centre point of each side flap. And this makes them nice and pointed and symmetrical. I replace the card and fold in all the sides just to check the fit again and make any amendments I want to make. As you can see, the paper sticks out a little bit at the corners of the envelope. So the next thing I'm going to do is remove a very small amount of paper at each corner. So as you can see, I'm only snipping off a very small amount of paper on each of these corner edges just to slope them slightly. So when I check the fit again, you can see that the corners look a lot better and smoother. Okay, so now we've completed the template. The next stage is to get the paper you want to make the envelope from, put the template on top of it and draw around the template. Once you've drawn all the way around, then you need to cut out that shape. Make sure that you cut inside the pen lines because obviously you don't want the pen lines on your finished envelope. If you want to add a lining to the envelope, then feel free to do so. All you need to do is cut out a piece of paper, the same shape, exactly the same shape as the envelope, but it has to be about one centimetre smaller on all sides. And then you just need to stick it onto the centre of the envelope shape. Then once you've done that, you carry on to the next stage, and that is to fold that envelope shape in almost the same way as we did with the template, except we don't want to fold the centre lines onto the real envelope. So we just need to make four folds on the real envelope so that the four sides fold inwards. Then all you need to do is use a glue stick or double sided tape on the lower edges of the side flaps as shown here to complete the envelope. I think Permafix double sided tape is the best solution for this because it's strong and it's not messy. As a final step you can round off the corners of your envelope to give it a more smooth and professional look. Then all you have to do is put your card into the envelope and seal the upper flap shut or tuck the flap inside the envelope like so. I hope you've enjoyed this DIY and I hope it's been useful to you. Thank you very much for watching.